Welcome, everyone. It's a Friday. And again, you know what that means? It's the only caller dri USC caller driven show on YouTube. We definitely will not be the last, but we are the first to let you guys be the star of the show. So we're looking forward to a little bit. You guys calling in and uh, let us know what is on your mind. A lot happening at USC this week. You got the second week of spring practice, as well as a big bomb that dropped late last night, early this morning. Um, Antonio Morales and uh, our buddy Rusty Arrogant Nation putting out on Twitter the fact that there's been a significant ch a shift in the NIL policy at USC. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some interviews we had this week um, and a lot of articles. But uh, again, it's a great day. It all kind of coincides, Matt, also with the fact that we just had a huge recruiting uh, uh, coup last weekend in the South. Uh, I'm not saying that this, this takes any luster off of Coach Henderson, but I am saying that, you know, there's definitely something to this story. Well, you know, one thing uh, I mentioned on our call on our uh, emergency calling show uh, last Sunday afternoon, not our regular Monday show, but our Sunday afternoon uh, breaking news show uh, was you know, right when the recruits were rolling in and we wanted to do a, a, an immediate broadcast. I made the point, you know, a lot of USC folks think, hey, we need to sign Aaron Donald. We need to bring him on staff. And I would just, I just want to make the Hello. point. He's already doing the job. He's already uh, helping USC Hi, without this? USC paying him. Yes, I am. Want me to hang on? No, hang on one second. No problem. Take time. Sorry, sorry about that, Matt. Um, we got we we got an early call, Matt. My bad on that. Sorry. Let's bring on the call. Okay. Well, call. Let's do it. Um, hello. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Gary. Gary, I should know that by now. <laughs> hey Gary. Hey Gary. I don't know. Hey hi. I don't know if I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be off target at least from from your opening for a minute, but I, ha I have a question here and I'll get to it in a second. I'm giving you an illustration. There was this guy in this small village, he, and he was an this guy didn't know anything. Well, this village decided to have an election to actually elect the village idiot, <laughs> and this guy ran. And he ran unopposed, and he still lost. So he was more in up than he thought. What am I saying? This I got about a dozen diehard uh, FC fans, and we talk all the time. But you know, I don't think we know anything, and compared to what you guys do. So, and I've been watching, you know, Ohio State and LSU, and everybody's—they're uh, all national champions, you know. But here's my question: What are the players? and the factors that you think will really ensure that we're going to be a very good team this year? That's my question. Why don't you, that, why don't you jump that first, Matt, and I'll, I'll follow up. Well, you know, I mean, I think the, the people who are going to make sure that we're better this year are the, co are the defensive coaches. I mean, that's, that's what's different. You know, that, that is what has changed. And, uh, and so, you know, Gary, in many ways, and this this is a this is a long running point of debate, especially with Adam. Uh, not to I'm not trying to bag on Adam. I'm just trying to illustrate the point that Adam thinks uh, the players sucked last year, and I am very was very clear and still am banging the drum. It was not about the players. It was about the coaches. The coaches did not give the players uh, direction. And so you know, Gary, this might seem like a cop out. But I really, I really want the conversation to be framed this way because if we identify a player as you know a potential breakout candidate or the guy who's going to make the difference, it kind of feeds into that notion that you know the players were underperforming and now and now they're going to perform. But my emphasis is on the coaching is going to develop not just this individual here, that individual there. The coaching is going to be developing whole position groups and the whole defensive unit. So really, the, the, the people who give me confidence, the people I identify right now, you know, as spring practice is just getting underway, rather than look at one individual player, uh, I'm looking at just how much better the quality of coaching is. And you're seeing USC, I mean, this is partly a recruiting thing, but it's also partly, uh, you know, a testament to the credentials of these guys. These recruits who are coming aboard, the recruits who came aboard, this past Sunday, they cited player development. I can get to the NFL. This guy's going to help me get to the NFL. That's a point that Tim 
has been making very consistently. And so the narrative is changing. The conversation surrounding USC is changing. The Trojans' identity is changing, and it's changing in all the ways it needs to. These are all positive identity changes. So, you know, I mean, if, if you really did press me uh, to identify a player, I'll give you one, Anthony Lucas. But, but, but like, it's not as though I'm the, I've been this Anthony Lucas truther or, you know, believer. Like, I don't mention him all that often. But I just think he's a representative example of a guy who was on the defensive line and like didn't really come to the surface all that much last year. And I think that he could be poised to really benefit from the coaching uh, on this staff. So, but, but my main emphasis, Gary, is the coaching is going to take not just one player here, one player there. It's going to take the whole group and lift its uh, floor and, and hopefully raise its ceiling much higher than any of us can currently imagine. Well, I'm going to try to be rare in my life, and I'm going to try to be consistent here, Gary, and I'm going to stick with the fact that I've been just all about what I want to see on the interior of both lines. And so um, I, jo Jonah Monheim is moving from left tackle, and, and PFF just basically rated him. If he had stayed at tackle, they rated him as the as like a top three or four offensive tackle uh, in college football, returning offensive tackle in college football. But that's obviously just because his frame, you know, and, and he doesn't project as as a tackle. So, and matter of fact, even last year, I, I've heard things when people said that he was he was supposed to be inside last year, but because that the we've talked about the we're not going to go back into 2023 and what happened, you know, with uh with guys not getting in, passing medicals, you know, guys getting hurt early this, you know, can you always get hurt early this season, uh, and just for whatever reason, uh, very talented players coming and just not performing and gelling together, right? So that's just that's that. Um, but I'm interested to see what how how Monheim can do at center. That again, he, he's going to be the guy calling out the line play. Um, he's going to be a guy. I really think they could be really. They have the opportunity with Alani Noah and uh, and Pregnant to be really big down the middle there as well. A load, right? We're going to the Big Ten, but that's those are three in the middle there. We get a really nice push. I remember the old days, right? You guys, we had a quarterback sneak. We didn't have to cross our fingers and hope they squirt through somewhere. Like we actually had a surge and a push up front. I think we're going to start to see a lot more of that. And then on the defense side of the ball, um, I, I'm just really interested to see Isaiah Rakes. I talked about him, uh, and he kind of reminds me of Antoine Woods. If you guys remember Cookie Monster back from that, that uh, 2015 team, played with the Cowboys for a while. Just a, a you know, same size-ish. I think Rakes is, is like uh, 320, I believe. And... Um, and then Antoine was about that same size, six one. So you got a stout guys in the middle. I want to see how he can do. You know, not just not just um, like filling up space on run plays, but also just everything I read from the scouts about him. You know, he played running back in in high school. You know, he's quick. He's got good lateral movement. You know, he he can stack and shed. He's not getting caught up in the trash. He can move and collapse that pocket. But in when I was talking to him after practice. He said Henson really, they're talking about him, really want him to be more physical. It's all about physicality. And, and so they're, they're challenging him, and they're challenging this defensive line to get physical and get nasty. So um, I think this year, I'm just feeling it. I think our skill guys are always going to be great. I think on offense, you're going to have Lincoln Riley. Miller Moss already showed us he can do it. Obviously, quarterbacks have to carry a team. I think he can do it as a leader on the field and off the field. But I really think that interior line play, you know, is where it starts on the inside and up front. And if they could play solid in those two spots, that's going to go a long way to covering up any maybe warts we might have, you know, on the back end or the farther we get out from center. Anything else, Gary? No, I and thank you. That's a, a great uh, response. Uh, maybe my question is uh, off the, the main topic, but I do agree with what you're saying. And I think um, I'll look at Anthony Lucas as kind of a test case for the theory that coaching should be able to develop these guys. But in any case, you've given a great answer. Now I've got something more to say at the gym than, than, you know, my usual blather, but thank you guys. Fight on guys. Fight on Gary. Hey, listen, I I've been listening to you for weeks now and there is nothing, uh, just like simple blather coming from you. Every time you, this is what we want from our callers. This is why it's your guys show. You guys make the job so much easier for us. We don't have to prepare a bunch of stuff. 
You guys come and give us your perspective, ask some questions, give your opinion. And Gary, every single week, you just you just do a great job. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay, guys. Thank um, you, Gary. We have, uh, I got the phone. By the way, guess what? Surprise. We got the phone lines fixed and we got three people to call queue. So I got to speed my big mouth up. Sorry about that lengthy answer, but uh, Gary, I love you, man. I have to give you a good answer. Hello, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, guys. I'm on the air. You're on the air. Hey, good, good, after, um, good evening, brother. It's been, a, it's been a month. This is Manjeet from Imperial. Manjeet, how are you doing? How you been? I'm been, I'm doing good. I've been good. How are you guys? How about you guys? I'm happy. And I think Man, you're, happy right Man, you're yeah, you're getting what you wanted. NIL, baby. It's ramping up. That's what you wanted, Manji. That, that's what I that's one thing I wanted. And second thing is it was bothering me that the SEC was coming and taking our kids and we, we're going back and returning the favor. Yeah. Let them get a taste of our medicine. That's what I'm happy about. That's one thing. I, I just gotta let me make another comment. Um, I've been hearing a lot of stuff on Caleb with the pink nails, the pink purse. Um, I love love the guy. He's got he's a great talent, no doubt about it. Could play. But what I'm thinking about, I hope I like 20 years down the road, I don't hear about stuff like where his dad pressured him too much. The kid was born out, and that's why he's acting out. The pink purse and all that stuff kind of scares me. But the talent, no doubt, no doubt. You guys respond. Pink's just a color, man. I mean, I guess our generation, you know, it's really, it's really nice to be in schools these days. There's kids that are far more open and, and far less bigoted towards people that are different. And, and, and they're, they're very resilient. There's a number of things about Gen Z and, and uh, that I could go on and on and freaking out about. But what I can say is there is their acceptance, um, you know, and millennials. It's just they're not as kind of hung up on stuff that we all were. Uh, uh, pink is, like I said, pink's a color nail polish is nail polish i don't think it says anything about his character you're talking about a kid that woke up every day since a little kid at five o'clock to work out to perfect his craft and we saw that come to fruition the last two years i mean the, the guy the guy he could walk around you know it, 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 whatever he wants in my opinion because it doesn't what you wear or what you look like never defines you do you know what i mean janji so realistically is can he can he show up in the nfl produce like he produced in college and support his teammates to win. That's the key. But but what I don't with care that, with, that, with that kind of behavior. You think he's he's gonna have a he's gonna have respect of his teammates in the locker room? I mean, it's still a gladiator sport, brother. Do you remember Manji? Manji, 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 if he's a if he's a dude and he throws uh, five touchdown passes a game and he leads the Bears to thirteen wins, that that will like no one's gonna care about the nails. That's every it. high school kid, man. Every high school kid. Every high school and kid in Chicago, you guys will be wearing fingernail polish if he starts throwing five touchdowns again. I like I care. I, I care I if, if you I just, if, I just if, hope it's not like hey, hang on, Manji. Go ahead, Matt. If you commit crimes, I care about that. If you paint your nails a certain color, I don't care. And and like it all comes down to what do you do on the field? That's it. That's it. You know, another guy in Chicago, Dennis Rodman. Used to paint his nails way before it became in vogue. Wore dresses, dyed his hair, put makeup on, you know, dressed up with Madonna. Uh, and he was one of the toughest guys in the NBA. So, again, I don't think what you wear really suggests how tough you are. Yeah, but be, being Dennis Rodman, like a kind of a sidekick and being a quarterback of an NFL team is two different things. I, I get you. I'm just hoping it's not like a father-son where the father just burned the kid out. I've seen um, Tiger Woods documentary, De La Hoya documentary. I hope it's not the dad where he just he's just acting out. I mean, I love Caleb. I hope it works out for him. It should. It should. Again, I I I would not I would not put too much stock in the the pictures and the and the stuff going on, on the internet. It's just like it's fingernail um, polish, man. One, one, it's a one color. More I got you. I got you, brother. One last question, Juju Lewis. What I mean, he's dude. If you're committed, you're committed. Stop thinking just flying around Colorado. You committed. You're committed. Stop with that nonsense. I don't get it. Well, I mean, Tim, you, Tim wrote about Juju at Trojans Wire, so I'll let him handle this one. Yeah, well, it, it, the, the guy is a top quarterback. Everybody wants a piece of him, right? You know what's nice also is is, is everyone wants to beat Dion, and Dion doesn't come to your high school. You've got to go to Dion to go see Dion. So uh, he has the opportunity. They yeah. fly him in, they wine him, dine him. He goes to Chicago. I mean, he goes to 
Colorado, goes to Boulder, has a great time, meets uh, you know a goat at a cornerback, you know, and has the opportunity to extend his brand, but also to to basically compete because look, this is a business. It, it's now a business, and if you just go, I'm signing, I'm locked in, I'm with you guys. They don't gotta work as hard. That collective doesn't. Maybe you know, maybe it's I don't know. Maybe this is the game. Maybe it's a bargaining thing. I really, or maybe he's just a young guy that wants to make sure he's making the right decision. You're making a decision that's going to shape the rest you. of your life. And why not go on those visits? You have unlimited ones. And if USC, I, I've always been a firm believer in this. You want these guys to go have their visits because if down the road, the last minute they want to pull out or, you know, a, a year into it, he's coming all the way from Georgia. Let's say he's got to sit and wait his freshman year. You know, do you want him transferring out or do you want a guy that really wants to be at USC? He needs to look and see what he has around. Go out there, do those sh trips, and then the key is, is he wants he and his dad have talked time and time again that they want him to be developed by Lincoln Riley. Why? Eisman trophies, number oh, one NFL draft picks, quarterback guru. And now, now that we have this whole I thing with NIL, wow. All right, let me uh, one last comment, and I'll hang up. I mean, I love the NIL, NIL, NIL ducks are getting in order. We're getting all these top recruits. We got the coaches that can develop them, but it's going to all just come down to the next season. If USC is speaking flames out like they did, it, it, it doesn't matter. But if they go dominate the Big Ten, hey, great things are ahead. That's all I got to say. Yep. Great call, man, G. Yeah, it, it, it's, there's no doubt that if the USC goes, they're saying all the right things. They're hiring all the people. They're attracting the right recruits. Now they got to close it. How they close it? You know, they, they got to show proof of concept. They, they've got to go out there and show you that gotta, this you got to win, yes, yes. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. All right, brother. Fight on. Hey, Thanks guys. for calling in. God bless you guys. Good Good Friday. Absolutely. All right, brother. All right. Well, um, that's right. Don't forget this. Uh, it's uh, the holiday weekend for all you guys out there. Appreciate, you know, all of you guys being here on, on a Friday night. Like we always do. We got some good numbers. We have 152 right now between uh, Twitter and, and YouTube. Again, uh, Thank you. Very humbly. You guys want to spend your time with us. Please make that call. Call on in. Next caller. Hi. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, guys. Russ from San Diego. Russ, thanks for calling. What's going on? What's on your mind? Well, you know, first thing, I just, this, this has been a nice week. I, uh, you know, we're, as you mentioned, the people who are kind of calling into the show right now and during spring ball, we're kind of the dedicated, but. It's so it's certainly been nice to go over to, you know, Georgia land and Alabama land and SEC land and just see these people are huffing so much copium right now. It is glorious. And not just your normal copium, like your military space grade copium. They're <laughs> huffing it. They're snorting it. They're mainlining it. They all know what's coming. They know that we have unleashed our NIL package. The NCAA is not going to be there to set us back another 15 years. And they are wigging out. And it has just been absolutely glorious to see. Yeah. Uh, it, it looks like USC is finally entering the NIL battle without having one arm tied behind their back. Right. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, well, while we, if we're talking about it right now, we might as well just let's just pop it out really fast. So I, I I stole this. Thank you, um, Arrogant Nation, Rusty, for uh, allowing me to shamelessly steal this right off of your right off of your um, tweet. But basically, it, here it is, guys. As we head towards year two, I want to provide a rather significant update to all who have stepped up to support the House of Victory in our first year of existence. In this rapidly evolving NIL environment, we understood that the only certainty to our operation was change. Per previous NCAA and USC guidance, House of Victory has only provided NIL opportunities to current student athletes enrolled at USC. That is your key right there. Okay. Last month, Tennessee filed a lawsuit against the NCAA, resulting in federal judge granting an injunction blocking the NCAA from enforcing their NIL rules around recruiting. And now here's your second part. Consequently, House of Victory has now received full clearance from USC to support recruits with paid NIL opportunities before, before they enroll at USC. So again, until now, you had two camps. Again, I wrote it. I'm trying to keep saying this all, all night. 
but I did write about this as well. Um, it, it's just, it just came out and what you have is USC and schools like USC who read that whole thing about you cannot induce somebody to come to your school with NIL contracts and deals. And so what the USC said, fine, we wait until you get here and then we line you up with our NIL deals. Other, other um, programs have been using NIL and, collab, uh, and, and their collectives to get high school recruits to sign on the dotted line, meaning they were lining up deals for these guys either written ahead of time or just, you know, wink, wink, shake, shake, handshake. I don't know how it all went down. I don't know all the details of it, but USC and schools like USC were waiting until guys. So what they would say, they have to tell recruit, Hey, we can't guarantee you anything, but don't worry. Trust me. Look, look at all these guys. They're making lots of money. Once you get here, we'll sign you. And then you have other schools. Let's say it's another PAC 12 school. Let's say it's up North. Let's call it Oregon. And what they say is, Hey, look, you know, we got you. Don't worry about it. Here's 300. You're, you're left tackle. Here's $600,000. Why don't you, you know, why don't you come to Oregon and live like a king in Eugene? You can buy the entire state of Oregon for $600,000. Come on up here and, and we'll take care of you. USC was, it was not an even fight. So USC is battling with one arm tying their back. Now, clearly from that statement, and I'm, I'm telling you, Rusty, if you're, if you're trolling me, oh, no, he's not, but I, it, from that statement, it really looks like USC now is is ready to battle with the big boys. And and you know the simple point needs to be made that you know when the NCAA was kneecapped in terms of NIL enforcement a few weeks ago with you know the University of Tennessee we talked about it you know was that going to be the moment all this uh you know got uh, liberalized and I think we can pretty clearly safely say that's exactly what happened. And so that that opened the door for USC to feel uh, a lot less uh, cautious about this, you know, because you, because you know, you what happened in 2010 with the NCAA legitimately made USC administrators today, you know, Carol Folt, uh, very cautious about being too aggressive, and but that that uh, decision uh, a few weeks ago that 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 gave USC permission to rework this. So, you know, common sense prevailed in terms of USC reacting to that decision. Uh, that ruling uh, in this manner. And I'll pop this up like I always do in all, in all of our videos. Um, it's time, Trojan fans, you've talked about it for years. We want NIL. We want to compete with Oregon and, and Texas A&M and Miami. We want, we want to do what we want to keep the kids home. We want to pay. Well, here's your opportunity. You can, it, you don't have to be a multimillionaire. You don't have to donate a building. You just get a hold of, uh, you know, of w, you go to www.houseofvictory.com. You can choose your sport. And you can support the athletes uh, that you so greatly want to get to come to USC. If you can afford it, this is a great opportunity for you to directly support our student athletes. Um, I really hope you guys take advantage of this. Again, houseofvictory.com. You get to pick the sport. And uh, there are all different kinds of donation levels. So, um, yeah, Russ, I think, we, I think we have turned the corner. This is what we've all been waiting for. What a great recruiting weekend last week. Now we got the players in place. We got kids. Remember this? Remember kids would come out here and they'd talk about how great the weather was, you know, how great the school is, you know, everything but the coaching. All these kids are saying what all the coaches have been saying in the beginning. It's, it's a great message. Development, development, development. And now all these kids are starting to talk about NFL development, development, development. Yeah. Absolutely. It's great because that was, I think, the most important component. All the other stuff comes secondary to is that school going to be able to get you into the NFL? And, you know, sort of on that note, I'd like to ask a quick question. You know, one observation I had, I've, I like everyone else, you know, every other Trojan alum has probably been fangirling over Eric Henderson. And I think one thing that's flew under the radar is he's actually listed as the co defensive coordinator. So, you know, Matt, I know, and both of you guys have talked about this before, that, you know, Danton Lynn is probably, listen, if he gets the defense popping, he's maybe here two, three years max. He's young. If he turns his defense around, some team's going to offer him a head coach. I'm curious, what do you guys see the line of secession being on this team? Because we have, we have Henderson, Entz. we have Entz, we have Belk. All three of those guys could step up and be the next defensive coordinator. So I was 
I was in, you know, it piqued my interest that Henderson was listed as a co-defensive coordinator. What, you know, how do you guys see that playing out? Well, I think uh, an important, I think an important point to make here, Russ, is that, uh, you know, Taylor Mays is still on the staff as an analyst. USC was able to retain him. Uh, this is, a, Taylor Mays is the main reason why if one of these coaches uh, departs after one or two seasons, I'm not going to be worried because then hopefully Taylor Mays comes in, gets a position job, and maybe in like 2028, 2029, four or five years down the line, he will be USC defensive coordinator. And I and I and I would like to think that Lincoln Riley uh, ha, has has talked to Taylor Mays about st staying in the program. There will be a line of succession as guys ahead of you go get a head coach, a college head coaching job, or maybe an NFL coordinator job, whichever uh, you will be next. I I hope Lincoln Riley's had that conversation. I obviously don't know if he has, but, you know, Lincoln Riley's smart. He's had that conversation with Taylor Mays already. Yeah, I, I, I do like that thought. I would love to see Taylor Mays uh, continue coaching USC for a long time. Uh, I, I went right away when you said that. I mean, we know a lot of these titles are just for money, right, or just prestige as well. I know that that one of the big reasons why Eric Henderson did come here to USC is because I, you know, he he sees himself, as a big, just like all coaches, right, they want to move up. This would be an opportunity for him to prove himself and move into a defensive core position, if not here, maybe somewhere else. Uh, but, um, and, and Belk, the only thing I have against Belk is, and, and, and it's unfair, because I mean, it, one, it was at Houston, two, people learn from, you know, from from previous jobs, and he's going to be working with Lynn and and and, and Entz, right? And so I'm not pigeonholing him that, you know, you, you had, diff you, you struggled here at this place, therefore that's what you're going to be forever. But I mean, to me, honestly, I, I'm thinking a, a guy like Ens, who was a head coach, um, you know, just played tough defense. Well, we're going to see. I mean, it's it's a great problem to have. But I think literally all three of them could be candidates for the job and all three of them legitimately could get the job. So that's that's my chicken out um, <laughs> for that answer is that uh, all three of them literally would be great candidates for the job. But I'm also thinking, though, once we get a taste, if Lynn is as successful as we think and he goes off to the NFL right, or to a head coaching job in, in college football, I think we might have learned our lesson. I think we might have learned that you cannot, you, you, we love our guys, you want to be loyal to your guys, but you have to get the best person available for your coordinator jobs, whether that's in-house or out. I mean, that's, that's a fact, you know. You want to be loyal, but your true loyalty is to your players, and you want to put them in the best position for them to develop and go to the NFL, and that's with top-flight coordinators. Yeah, great call, Russ. Appreciate you so much. We got a little line stacking up a little you, bit. Boys. Absolutely, man. Fight on, boys. Have a great night. I'll be listening. Fight on, Russ. All right. Um, let's just keep them rolling. Sorry, guys. I'm getting a little bit long winded on my answers. I'm going to work on it. We got someone who's waited 17 minutes. We will be with you very soon. Hello, caller. Thank you so much for joining us on a glorious Friday. USC players go and get paid. I love it. Can you just go ahead and help us out here? What's your name and where are you calling from? Well, it's Avery, and I love talking to you. What's up, big dog? Tim, how you doing? What's up, Avery? Well, are you happy yet? I'm happy to talk to you. you? I, 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 that's why I called. That's why I'm ready to talk, big oh, dog. Man. All right. All right. So what? So what's your initial thoughts on this whole thing? Okay, so let's keep it a buck, man. You and I had the, the final couple conversations at the end of the season. One of them, one of them was about getting the groceries, right? So, boom, he's going and got the groceries. He's going and got the coaches. Um, it's all going in the right direction, right? Um, so the whole yin to the yang, the whole mindset, I mean, every, everything is headed in the right direction. You got to stay the course. And I think a while after me, you talked about that, I called in just on, on a regular Friday like this. And I asked you and Matt, like, hey, I think the biggest thing that could have happened in the last couple of months is Jen Cohen. I never really was concerned about the NLM situation. I just think she was a good hire because on the on the senior management end of it, she was a good person that can help mold him so he doesn't make the Alex Grinch decision again. And on top of that, organization, I believe from a servant leadership type of standpoint, she's the one that's going to remove all the barriers. She's going to remove all challenges keep Lincoln from not being successful. She's going to put him in the most advantageous situation, and he 
we're going to utilize you if you're going to go to the Eagles to, 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 to the utmost, right? I, I see this. I see this. Um, I mean, let's let's just be a buck, man. NIL or no NIL. When USC is rolling, they have the best internal and external factors to recruit. That's what most schools are scared of. Uh, Lincoln Riley needs to be to get out of his way and, 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 and uh, what did I say? Invite a USC. Well, I, again, I'm going to push back you like I always do. This is all Lincoln Riley, my man. I agree with you that Jen Cohen is a phenomenal at her job. I know that she has been a voice for these hirings. Fully agree. But I, again, I just, where we usually part ways in our agreement is that you just do, you never give Lincoln Riley enough credit. He said, basically he got, he got called out big time by everyone. And he, you know, he kind of took it on the chin and kind of went with it. And I mean, if I can find it really quick, I, I kept this too. He basically, he, he just, he said, you know, Hey man, th this sucks right now, but we're, we're going to be great. You know, it hurts me, but I'm going to fix it. And he did. And then he turned that around and said, matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna fix it. We know the offense is going to purr. Everything I do going forward now is going to be directly tied to making this defense elite. And Avery was he done. He went out, got those coaches and he got it done. I'll bet you Lincoln Riley also had a big deal in saying, hey, you know what? You see all those guys over there in Tennessee. You see those guys up north. You see how they run their NIL. You see how the NCAA does nothing about it. We're done. We're done playing by the, the, the letter of the law when nobody else is. Guarantee you Lincoln Riley had something to do with that as well. So uh, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right giving Jen Cohen a lot of credit for this because there is. But I really do think, Avery, sooner or later, you're going to come to my side and start giving Lincoln Riley a lot more credit than you do, you do give him, Matt. Nothing to add. Nice. Avery, anything else? Uh, yeah, because I'm always, I'm always with Matt when he gets in his Jedi mind bag trick. The only weak link right now is Josh Hinton, and I think we're going in the right direction because he told it. Can you speak up, Avery? Avery, can you speak up? And by the way, Tim, people are saying you need to turn up your mic too. That's interesting. Are you able to hear yeah, me okay? Yeah, I can speak up. Um, Thank yeah, you. I, I got, yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Better. Yeah, so I think, I think, okay, I think la the last thing I just want to see, well, not so much want to see, just want to continue going in the right direction. Matt has alluded to this, uh, Josh Henson, but he also was quoted uh, within the last week or so coming from practice saying that, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. He, I am. I'm, I've literally got the phone to my mouth. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you loud and clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Josh Hansen was saying that, hey, with the, with the new scheme, they have the ability to, uh, to play and practice more man-to-man, -man, uh, uh, more, 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 more going against each other, more, more, more competitively, right? So I know Matt has alluded to that this is the year that Josh Hansen indirectly and directly is the guy on the hot seat. He, he, he's the last piece. He's the last piece. Everything else is going in the right direction. I have no more for you. And, and Avery, you're from Georgia, right? If I remember right. Hey, 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 having said that, hey, shout out to me. I'm a new uh, new mover of uh, moving to Washington. Uh, I'm going to become a new new Washingtoner. I can't even think of the, 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 the state of terminology or what. Yeah, I just uh, got promoted moving to Washington in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, moving from Georgia to Washington. D.C. or state of Washington? Did you say state of Washington? Yeah, state of Washington. Matt would know. Where? Where someone from Washington called? A Washingtonian. I knew Matt would know. Yeah, Washingtonian. Shout out. Where? Where? On the way. Beautiful state, man. Beautiful state. Where? Where in Washington? I lived in Seattle for twenty years. That's all I have to say. Hey, Josh Hanson just needs to step up. Hey, really quick, where are you moving? I didn't hear you guys. Yeah, we, we were curious. Where uh, are you moving? Washington, um, outside of Chehalis, outside of Chehalis and um, Olympia. All right, enjoy your move and uh, look forward to talking to you again, man. Appreciate it. We don't always get along, but I always appreciate your calls. Fight on. Hey, I love you guys, man. Fight on. Another great call, you guys. Uh, we're, again, this, this makes our job really easy. Appreciate everyone being here on a, on a Friday night. Uh, if you guys could just take one quick second, if you are on YouTube, please do us a favor. And, and if you're enjoying the show, hit that like button. If you're not, leave it alone. But if you are enjoying it, just hit that like button. Uh, appreciate you guys all being here. And while you're at it, uh, if you aren't subscribed already, and I don't know why you're not, 
hit that subscribe button right here. That way, you know, we go live. Uh, we went live last Sunday when we got the great news uh, pull, pulling in, uh, you know, guys from Georgia, guys from Florida, guys from Texas uh, on that great recruiting, recruiting hall over the weekend. We will go live whenever you have big breaking news. Uh, we have another call coming in. Well, there's one in the call queue, but I don't see it coming in. That's interesting. Oh, that's why. Sorry, one second. Hmm. That says we have one in the call queue and we don't. Um, but I don't have a call, so that's interesting. Maybe it'll come. Oh, here it goes. Coming through right now. Here we go. Good evening. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Brian. Real talk. Brian, how you doing? Thank you, by the way, for uh, good guy. Good, good. Appreciate you coming in and helping out the show the other day. Um, so we got a lot of news. We got NIL. We got spring ball. We got we got recruiting. What, what do you uh, What do you want to talk about? Well, I'd love to talk about uh, your presence at practice and wondering how. What your eyes are telling you about our offensive line in relation to the defensive line? Are they are they squaring up or what? So I guess this would be probably a good time to do this. Um, this is how it works for for us. So uh, we we're allowed to watch the beginning of practice where they're really just kind of warming up, doing individual drills. Um, so when we go in, uh, kind of what you see. Let me see if I got it queued up. So you, we're gonna go in. You're just gonna see uh, just just the guys, um, you know, go, going through their drills, and uh, you know, the, here you have secondary doing work together. Um, it's a lot of individual stuff. You don't see a lot. Of, you don't see any eleven on eleven. You know, you don't see any anything really. It's gonna tip your hand to like you know who who's running with the ones, who's running with the twos. You're not going to see a lot of uh, of of that kind of thing, but but you will see again. You're seeing the the preparation. You're seeing the, the attention to detail um, on this team. You got what I also noticed from I used to come to practice years and years and years ago with Pete Carroll, and just the amount of staff they have, support staff that they have at these things now. Uh, you know, they've always had grad assistants, but just the, just a sheer number of, of analysts and guys out there. Um, it, it just seems amazing. And here you see actually Lincoln Riley right there, right here. You can see Lincoln Riley kind of uh, trying to bat the ball, right? He's trying to bat the, the running back or the receiver running back. Sorry. Uh, and, and, and just really getting involved. It, it was, it's not like practice. We're getting to see uh, Lynn's defense. We're not seeing the, 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 how, who's getting the better upper hand, the defensive line or the offensive line. We're really just out there. Um, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. Just being on the field, getting to see the new guys coming in, uh, seeing how well the players are, are working with their coaches. Uh, I just don't think in, in modern football, it's not just at USC, you just don't get the access to practice like you used to. Matt, any thoughts on that? No, I mean, like, I just want to hear more from you about uh, the, the sights, the sounds, everything that you took in at practice. Uh, It did. Can I mute? Oh, you have to mute yourself, Matt. Sorry. Once I play the video, you got to unmute yourself real quick. I'm interested in knowing, you know, just seeing how the coaches operate, how they balance uh, the realities of uh, practice, managing a team and handling their media availabilities and how uh, sports information uh you know, is kind of circling in the background and, and managing things just like what what are you learning about how how everything comes together and just some interesting things. Obviously, you're not able to share everything, but, you know, the things that you are able to share. I know I know people would be really interested in just what you're learning, what you're absorbing, what you're soaking up uh, as you attend these practices as a reporter. Well, I, you, so it's, it's, it's very regimented, again, that they have very strict policies and you break them, you're, 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 you're going you're to lose access. But um, overall, you know, the communication is going to be great. Um, the video noise, video audio is playing. Yeah, I got it.
There you go. I can um, hear you. Yeah, it's it's um sorry about that. It, I that's the one thing. I thought I went there and scrubbed all the audio out of those those videos. Great catch, Matt. Uh hopefully they didn't they don't shut us down or, or demonetize us for that. But um yeah, the communication has been great. Uh, you know, I, I got the credential and uh, Katie Ryan, who's the sports information director for USC, has been very good at informing me. You know, for instance, there's going to be a Zoom meeting on Saturday that where we're going to meet with uh, Lincoln Riley and, and have an opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, after practice, there's plenty of opportunity. If you guys are if you guys are checking out um, the site, you know, I put up a couple of uh, interviews I, we've had. If you check my Twitter, I... I put out and Instagram, I put out a couple of interviews that I was, you know, questions I was able to ask uh, Henson and, and other guys this week. So, I mean, I, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to access to, again, I, I don't know what it's like in other programs. This is the first time uh, that I'm covering uh, USC or any program. So I don't know what it's like at other places. I have heard though over the years that this is really a direction it's going. And um, for me, the experience has been nothing but great. I've, I've got the, the, uh, to cover the basketball program as well this year. That's a whole nother story that we, we I really want to dive into, but I know our football guys would bail, but you know, there's, there's, there's a coaching search going on. It's going to be a pretty crazy time for USC basketball. Did not see this going, but I did have an article out there. You guys, you want to check it out about, um, you know, did Kobe Johnson know something? Pretty sure he did because that was the head scratcher. If you're a basketball, SC basketball guy, that was a head scratcher. Kobe going into the transfer portal right when that happened. And also then, then, um, you had Enfield's name pop up. I, 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 I just said I, there's something. There's something. My dad and I were talking. There's something weird going on because it just it just didn't make sense. But anyway, back to football. Uh, great opportunity and 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 great experience. Loving it. Uh, can't wait to to get out to more practice. Yeah. Uh, what else you got for us? All right. Good to know. Uh, one other question. Seeing as how NIL is finally uh, looking like it's on board. Uh, when do you think we can anticipate seeing uh, Coach Henson make a splash with a high-profile offensive line target? Brian, where you been? Matt, you want to fill him in? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you're trolling me right now, but um, Matt, you know, go go ahead. Because I'm trying, still trying to fix that. I want to make sure that video is queued up. Well, I just think that with the liberalized NIL like this, A, opens the door for Henson, B, puts more pressure on Henson, that now you have more resources and ostensibly more leverage, you know, can you land that big, big, big fish, that big, that big, great whale, you know, the five star. Uh, so, you know, it certainly, it certainly raises the stakes, but it obviously improves USC's odds. And, and that's uh, just it, guys. You know, Wait, hold on. That's just it. Justice Terry, not only was he a five-star, not only is he a defensive lineman, he was committed for over a year to Georgia. Is that, Brian, is, is that big enough for you? That's, that's... No, no, I'm talking about the offensive line. Oh, oh offensive I, line. Oh, my I'm bad. well aware of what we pulled on the defensive line. We talked about yeah. it just recently on your show. Oh, okay. You, you, I, I yeah, I was talking about Josh Henson. He, Brian, Henson. Brian was asking about Henson. So, yeah. I, think, like, I swore you said Henderson. Sorry, my bad. Dude, we're going to a lot. We have Hanson, Henderson, cards on Henson. the table. Cards on the table. We have Hanson, Henson, and Henderson. That's going to be fun for years. I'm telling you right now. Uh, I I do this I, with <laughs> nil. One thing that I have seen, just uh, being the Cows observer, uh, clearly there are other sources. You know, the guys from On Three, the guys from Two Four Seven, uh, USCFootball.com, We are SC. They are all over um, daily by the minute. You know, Gerard Martinez, just Scott Schrader. Just by the second, you know, that's where you, you want to go if you want to have like up to the ultimate second. But as far as recruiting, um, you know, we we do we do fine on offensive line. The problem is it seems like that the whole NIL piece that's been hurting us. It, it really is. I mean, of all the positions, it just seems like USC has got burned at the, at the 11th hour left at the altar um, because, you know, well, the classic case, uh, you, you have a, an offensive tackle goes up to some school, you know, a, a day before signing day. And all of a sudden everyone thinks he's coming to USC and now he's a duck. You know, it, it's just that kind of thing. I think a lot of that has to do with, with and it might not be, it might be coaching. Um, Like you guys are talking about you guys. Uh, I, I like what, you know, Henson did in, in year one in 2022, cobbling that offense to, offensive line together. There were a lot of things that happened last year. Again, any offensive line coach is going to struggle when you had White, who's coming over uh, from Florida, he didn't make it in. 
Gino Quinones goes down. Clearly, the cupboard was, that's why they're grabbing all these transfers, because the cupboard was kind of bare. And the biggest thing is you could bring a bunch of studs in there, but if they don't gel as a unit, you know, the, the one, I mean, a lot of units, you need to have some cohesion, but none more than on the offensive line. And, and we saw that that was a big part of the offense struggling and stalling last year. So, yes, so short answer. Well, when we're all talking about USC being on the heater, we're talking, okay, monumental, monumental excitement around the entire college football community. You got you got Pike, you know, Josh Pate, rather, you know, talking about us and all that sort of stuff. I'm just wondering where we're going to see it on the offensive side other than wide receiver. You know, I'd, I'd really like to see some highly, highly rated offensive linemen come in and then it's like, oh, wow, we really are rolling. This is this is something else. Because, we, you know, it, it, when the wave, the tidal wave hits, and everyone started talking about us. And it's like, well, there must be something cooking there. There must something really be happening. Well, now, now I, I will be dead honest with you with, with the, you know, the, the, the free transfer with NIL, with the early signing day and not the traditional signing day. I used to be a, a complete diehard, just listening to, to everything. I mean, I still do listen. You guys, if you, if you want, if you got three hours of your life or even just an hour of it, you know, you can listen to a great podcast uh, that the that uscfootball.com does every you know I think every week or every couple of weeks you know, if that's you know and, and go ch check that out. But I, I just have a hard time following these guys you know from the time they're sophomores that they have interest in USC and or even juniors and seniors and then just for whatever reason they just don't become Trojans as so you're following like 50 guys that you'll never even care about in the future. I've kind of trimmed it down uh, a little bit myself, Matt. I think one thing to add is that a uh, real possibility at the hold on Brian a second. What was that Matt? I think one thing to add is just that, you know, I've been talking a lot about USC patiently assembling the staff, Lincoln Riley patiently assembling the staff, sacrificing the December portal for the spring portal. Now with this NIL, uh, you know, adjustment, this NIL situation, I think one thing to say about the spring portal is that, well, I mean, first off, USC needs a, a high-end offensive and defensive lineman in this spring portal window. But I think the important note with the adjusted NIL, and I know that the adjustment is more high school, but still, like USC is now playing with the big boys. It's taking a step up. I would say that right now, uh, getting at least one really elite lineman in the spring portal, I previously viewed it as a hope. Now I'm viewing it as an expectation. USC has to walk away with one really big fish uh, in this spring portal window with the momentum, with the buzz, uh, you know, the, the change in narrative right now. That really, I think now ought to translate. I'm not, not like it's pa it's past the point of hoping USC really should uh, get someone really big on the line in the spring portal. And if it doesn't, that's a huge disappointment at this at this point. And if someone could let us know, I just, I just did something with the audio. If it's too loud or too high, just give me a, a heads up. Sounds a lot better. Sounds a lot yeah. better. Okay. All right. So I hopefully fix the audio. Yeah. Hey, Brian, uh, again, uh, go ahead. Please do me a favor. I know you're, you're starting your own channel. Go ahead and plug that really quick. Let people know they can find you. Okay. Well, it's uh, Real Talk with Brian Jobbins, and I will be releasing my first video on YouTube uh, in the coming days. I'm just doing some editing right now because it's uh, got to come across sharp and of course i'll be plugging all my my trojan brethren and uh everything that comes along with it it will not be a call-in show it will just be a regular video like the light the torch podcast but uh you know i'm counting on you guys to pay attention show up and support we will absolutely brian you're missing out calling shows are where it's at trust me been doing this for a couple of years now and uh, the calling shows are, are the highlight of my week all right brian thank you so much fight on we'll talk to you soon that sounds good bye all right, and we'll keep it rolling again. Uh, we got another caller coming up. I mean, I guess make sure you get out there, you know, and you're following Trojan Blade, USCJ, the Delight the Torch guys, and, and Brian Jobbins. There's, I'm sorry, I'm probably leaving some people out, but just some lots of lots of great opportunities out there in this USC space. Caller, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, tell me, Matt. This is John from Detroit. How you doing? John, how hey, you doing? John. Yeah, man, I tried to get in, man. I've been trying to get in the last couple of weeks, you know, calls dropping and stuff like that. Uh, and I just, you know, I was out 
I had I had I had some things I was doing tonight, and I and I'm like, wait a minute. I turned on. I said, my boy's on. I got to see if I can get on. Uh, first of all, I like to just uh, first of all, I just want to start off by saying, man, bless you guys, man, just for having this show. Because um, I'm so invested in this team and have been probably since I was probably 11 years old, and um, that was back in the days when I used to wait for my Sports Illustrated to get to the house every Thursday or Wednesday, man, just to read about the Trojan and what was going on out West. It was just completely different in them days. But um, um, definitely uh, excited about what happened this past Sunday. Um, Bloody Sunday for the Georgia Bulldogs. I love that. Uh, But the only thing even about all of that, and we know it's a long process. We know that basically, you know, how kids are, you're trying to get them to the finish line. You know, we've already started the race, so we're trying to get them to the finish line. And uh, many things can happen going into this year. And the one thing that I'm, I'm, you know, in my mind, I'm like, man, you know, I'm so excited about the new coaching staff. Um, you know, and then when I hear some of them talk, I'm like, man, these guys, some of these, some of these coaches, man, they, they, they sound like head coaches, especially Lynn, uh, and hence the great things I've been hearing about him, and of course, Henderson. And uh, it's funny here because all the people, you know, my friends, even my family members are like, hey, hey, you better get that defense together, man. If they, if they don't get the defense together, they're going to get ran out of the Big Ten. And I'm not saying nothing. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying nothing. And I, I just, I just want to get the season started, and I just want to see what we're going to do, fellas. Uh, and also kudos to Lincoln Riley. Uh, he wants to win. You know, you heard all kind of noise you know, about, hey, and he going to be going to the NFL, this thing. You know, only thing, and, and, and I get it with him and, um, and Grinch last year. You know, Grinch, that's his boy. He's been riding with him for a few years. So it's like, even when the media was like, well, I don't know if this Grinch thing going to work out, but, you know, and I get it. Like, you know, this is my boy. And usually when you have a guy that's real tight with you, you know, I'm going to ride and die with this, you know. So we had to see to see if it was going to work out. The only problem I think what happened even going through that is that being in L.A., man, you guys know better than me, man. A lot of papers in L.A. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of people talking about a lot of stuff. And, and USC is right up there at the top of the chain when it comes to sports in L.A. So basically, even the players that say, hey, I heard some of the players saying, I ain't really reading this stuff. Trust me, they reading it. They reading it. And so he coached scared last year which made the players play scared to me. You know, when you got guys looking at their wristbands, they don't know what the heck they're doing. That's that's not a good sign, man. And as far as, and I heard you talking about the offensive line a little bit tonight. Last year, we just, no chemistry with the offensive line. None at all. And um, a lot of that, though, and I could be wrong for saying this, it just like, man, where was our center? I think that's how you pronounce his name. And I don't know where he was at last year. He was just, I mean, the way he was snapping balls. I didn't see nobody talking to each other, man, communicating. And it was just horrible, man. It was it, it was just horrible. So I just, um, you know, uh, uh, um, Tim, I just want, you know, uh, is there, I mean, since you was getting a chance to go to the practices and whatever, you know, is there any player, a couple players that really stood out to you? You know that I would like. You know that, that that you know as a fan. You know we 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 can you know looking that something's going to happen this year. That's going to you can say well this guy's going to surprise you. That guy's going to surprise you. Did you see that from anybody? I haven't seen anything in practice that made me go wow. I, one thing I have done is see how much bigger these guys are. Right. I mean, but you know, just getting bigger doesn't mean you're going to play better football. Uh, I need. I want to see how these guys move with their extra weight. Um, I haven't been able to see. And let's not beat up on Big Daddy Dietrich, dude. He, you know, he. You're, you're talking. It was. It was a whole line issue. It wasn't just one guy. And it just tends to be that I think if there's just that breakdown, it just it just kind of really falls apart. And and I even go down to there was some bad snaps in last season. I get that. But you're asking a guy to move. You know, we just had guys moving around. I know he came in as a center, but he played pretty much his whole career. He's a backup center, but he played guard, you know? And so we just asked a lot of people to yeah. do a lot of different things. Now, I just saying that makes you think, well, hold on, we're moving Monheim over from left tackle to to um, center. Yeah. 
but I, I do believe, you know, uh, Henson did say that he, he really likes the way that, that Jonah is progressing. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a natural athlete. The one he said, the one thing I asked him, you know, what sticks out for him, he says the guy is bright. He just picks stuff up fast. So he's been in the system for, for years. You know, well, I mean, he's been with, with Riley for, for, the, for the last two seasons, three springs. He, he should pick up whatever he needs to pick up at center and, and do well. Um, you know, we have uh, Jason Zanamello came in. You know, he's he's going to definitely want to work his way into to center the following year. I think we have these guys that played together a lot. I, I've been talking about that 2023 um, offensive line class, you know, quite a bit with Paige, Talele, Banuelos, uh, Noah, and Raymond. And so you 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 realize that these guys were getting a lot of reps together last year behind the, the other line. I, th I think that you should see that work its way into them being a cohesive unit. We'll see. I get burned every year because I, you know, I am a fan. I, I want to see the greatest from these teams all the time. But at the same time, I, I'm the more and more and more I, I sit back and see it, it's just they're gonna have to show us on the field because there's just too many. There's so many moving parts. We think we got a great all-star cast of defensive line coach uh, of uh, defensive coaches. They look great. They they look great on paper. They 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 sound the part. Are all these moving pieces going to come together and give us a product that's going to be successful in the Big Ten in year one? That's where we need to go. Calm down. Relax. Miller Moss lights out in the, in the Holly Bowl. Let's see how he does over a full season. I mean, there's just so much to this, but but it's great. Listen, we one thing I do know is this is moving in the right direction. There's no doubt about that. Whatever's happening here, it's moving in the right direction. I think fans might need to chill their expectations out a little bit. Like I said, a lot of moving parts. A lot. Of, we're talking about a brand new defensive scheme and system in, and I know that we're going to have. You know, there there are players that are going to come in that um that have that were at UCLA last year. I I get that, and so we're going to expect just right away, just plug and play like uh, John Humphreys at 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 corner. You know, coming in. Uh, but the rest of the team's going to take a little bit of time to acclimate and see what's what's going on in the system. So again. I would preach as much as we want. Hey, this is it. We've turned the corner. We're better now. We're 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 gonna take things out. You know, uh, Kamari Ramsey and and, and and John are only two guys on the team. Yeah, the rest of the team is gonna pick it up. They're installing it slowly. No, sorry, they corrected everyone. They're not doing a slow install. They're doing a methodical install. They're putting in the pieces and the fundamentals that everyone needs to see, and then they're gonna add stuff as they go. And that's why UCLA was so successful last year. And I think you put that cobble that together with a, a great players they brought in I, like i said earlier but i want to see how rakes can do in the middle there uh, i'm sure they're still going to add a couple more pieces maybe a tackle maybe a wide receiver maybe a tackle on on offense tackle as well and we'll see from there um but john i could talk for hours on this i've i've, I've ran through scenarios in my head we just got to see this stuff on the field you know what i mean right and that's 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 the main thing because you know yeah we it was bloody bloody sunny down in <laughs> georgia but you guys know if we ain't winning, we're not getting those guys. I'm going to tell you that. I mean, you know, to commit early, that's one thing. But, you know, hey, listen, everybody wants to back a winner. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, man, come on. we got, And I, I'm throwing it out there. We got to go at least nine and three. You know, at least nine and three. That's what I'm saying. At least, you know. And, um, I, you know, like I say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm fully invested in this team. I love this team. You know, I had got to where the last few years I, I stopped going out, going to games, man, because I'm like, I'm not, you know, under Clay Elton. I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't do it, even though I was still watching every week. I just, I'm like, I'm not spending my money to go out here. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But, um, man, I just need something good to happen. So, I, I but you're right. We're headed in the right direction. And, um, hey, we were so, at the, so far at the bottom, man. We can't do nothing but just go straight up. That's it. That's all I got, guys. So, you know, uh, great show. Guys, you guys just do a, a, a great job. And um, uh, I'm, I'm always honored when I get a chance to call the show. But not only that, to be able to talk to like-minded people that, you know, 
we all in this together, man. We 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 want to see this team do good. We got it you know, sooner or later, right? Guys calling from Florida and everywhere, man. So hey, man, I know you got other callers, but hey, thanks for taking my call, guys. John, I really appreciate yeah. your call again, as always. Uh, you know, it's an honor to talk to you guys. Um, thank you so much for taking your time to call in and talk to us. It, it means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to Matt as well. Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go full biblical here on 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 Easter uh, weekend, but. You know, there's gonna be there's gonna be out there. There gonna be those doubting Thomases, right? They're just not gonna believe. They're just not gonna believe until <laughs> right. until, until they until they see you know it, it in the flesh, right? So um, yes, right. You, you know, we, we we some of us have the faith. Some of us are gonna need that that doubting Thomas in us is gonna need some proof. <laughs> but but you know what? We're gonna get there. We 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 will. I promise you, we will get there, John. So um, fight on and it, it's. Whatever it is, it's going to be an interesting season, right? Moving to the Big Ten. I, I think all I want to see, right. I don't have a number, John. What I have is I want to see measurable and drastic improvement on both lines. Yeah. And that will make this guy happy. Yep. Yep. All right. Cool, all John. Right. Yep. Okay, call next week. All right. Fight on. All right. Fight on. It's been too long, and I'm terrible to get you guys. I told you this. When, when, I'm, when, we're doing, when I'm juggling the calls, doing the graphics, now I'm putting videos up, for God's sake. Um. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get bad on the chat. So appreciate all you guys being, especially you guys that that in the chat. I would encourage you all to call in. Uh, we got a call coming around, so I'd be quiet. But um, hold on a second. Caller, hang on one second. Uh, let's get through this really quickly. Uh, thank you so much, Gary. This is Gary from from Dana Point. Thank you so much for the ten dollars super chat. Absolutely, really appreciate your support of the show, and you show your support in so many ways. You know, a number of you guys call in. Number of you guys are in chat. Let me guys just show up and hit that like button. We appreciate all of you guys. But Gary, it just seems like you know. You're like a three tool, three tool uh, a star out there in center field. You you, you just seem like you just do it all. So uh, appreciate you so much. Um, and thanks again for that super chat, caller. Thank you for calling in on this beautiful Friday night. Got great news on our NIL recruiting is off with a blast. Coaches are saying all the right things. Players are flying around. How you doing? What on your mind right now? I'm doing fine. What's your Big name? Big Chuck Cassetti from the. It's Chuck Cassepi from, from the IE Inland Empire. Hey, Chuck. Thanks for calling in. I think you're a first-time caller. Is that right? Yeah, this is my first time. I've been following you guys, but this is my first time on the show. I love these. Welcome. I love these. Welcome. Where you been, Chuck? Oh, I wish you, I, <laughs> Go ahead. What's on your mind? What's on your mind, Chuck? <laughs> nah, I just want to, you know, do a recap on everything that just happened from this past weekend and everything. And, man... It's through the roof right now. You know, the tables have turned in college football, just like the climate. We have finally stepped up in, with our staffing in college football. Defensively, prior to Pete Carroll, we put an emphasis on high school football recruiting. We finally got our NIL package in order. Now it's time to, to put all the ingredients needed and blend them together so that we can build, you know, we can build on this new and well-oiled machine together and see how much fear that we can put in all college football. Everybody's on notice right now. Yeah. I just thought I want to put it out there. No, I, I agree. I think people are taking those. You know, you just don't go into Georgia, grab somebody who's been uh, committed to Kirby Smart for over a year out of his own backyard. Someone brought up earlier, they're talking about the SEC guys coming out here all the time. And I think I tweeted back out the fact that, you know what, Kirby, you've been coming into our backyard. Now Lincoln's going to repay the favor. We're going to go into Georgia. And and that, that's ex exactly what he did. Yeah, I, I think everyone's on notice, right? Now this new NIL thing, you know that that these programs knew that USC was not, they had a little upper hand, that USC was kind of handcuffed when it came to recruiting these kids. Now that's gone. That advantage that some of these schools have had is absolutely vanished overnight. Good point, Chuck. Exactly. No more walking on eggshells now. Yeah, for sure. What else? What else you got? No, I'm just seeing how everybody and everybody keeps talking about this Oregon does field night money field night. Well, we got 25 field nights over here, and probably some that has bigger, more bigger pockets. So I'm not scared of Oregon at all, and I'm just want to let everybody know, hey. Now, now we got we got unlimited funding. People don't realize how powerful SC is. We got the big dogs over here, you know. All the big dogs, compared to everybody else, they're they're, they're pennies. You know what I mean? And 
I just want to let everybody know, hey, don't be scared. Now, now we got we got the checks out to deliver everything, and all the hype. And we don't just everybody, everybody. We don't just have the big dogs. We have big dogs who are doing the dog work. Woof, woof. That's right. That part. That part. And I can see. Well, other than that, that's all I think. What happened? No, no. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. No, no, I'll follow up whatever you were saying. Uh, and I was just I was just going to say I, I kind of got that. We got to talk to, to Eric Henderson. I saw interviews with him. But that guy, he just does he just does. He just makes you feel like, you know, you just you're sitting back, you're talking. He does preach about the fact that he's just into relationship building and you know, just the way he carries himself, the way he talks to everybody, the way he just just his attention to detail, stopping, getting it, it's just it, it's just refreshing. And you can see that how he Along, I mean, he's just not the talk. He's also the, the walk. You know, he has he brought Aaron Donald in. What 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 a great endorsement that must be. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how close he stays to uh, Los Angeles and and the program. But um, I I just I just think that dog work is going to continue, not just on the field but also in recruiting. Yeah, he something about him is just super. I don't know what it is about these defensive line coaches. Just something really special about them and how they can relate to the players and the families. Yeah, the thing I get from from uh, Coach Andy is very genuine and very authentic. He he's very he's deeper than just football with these players, and I I think a lot of these defensive linemen guys, especially down south, you know, a lot of them, you know, they're they're mama boys, you know. He understands that. He knows how to tap into that, and that's a, that's what separates him. From just being a coach, he is like more family oriented, so he knows how it how it is down south, how they roll, and they they all they see is nothing but realness, you know. And most coaches can't deliver that. He's he's the real thing, and we are lucky to have him on staff. Yeah, absolutely, and, and then back it up, not just back it up with a dollar. Now we have the dollars, but also it's not hollow behind it. You you've got guys that are going to develop, and you got money to to back that up with that IL now. Great call. Listen, Chuck, that, that, that that's a great first call, by the way. Anything else you want to add? Uh, th- just, just keep on doing what you guys are doing. Keep a, keep bringing the news, man. I love it. I like waking up in the morning. I like watching it at night. Keep my days going good. Big time Die Hard Trojan fan for the longest. And thank you guys very much. I can hear your voice. Appreciate you. Fight on. Thank you so much as well. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, sir. Well, you guys... Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, I've, I love this. And we'll do, we've switched over to Twitter, and our, our Twitter right now is like over 100, I don't know, was it 170 people? And it's totally dwarfing our YouTube, um, which is pr- pretty amazing. We have like a little over 100 on YouTube. That means we've got about 175, 177 on, on Twitter. You guys, if you're on Twitter, uh, please drop us um, a follow. Uh, my name's Tim underscore Prangley, uh, and uh, you can find uh, Matt at. Uh, your Trojan is it Trojans Wire, correct? I should the Trojan know Wire account. I I tweet from it, so you just follow the Trojans Wire. Yeah, that's account. usually yeah. that's usually that's usually you. So you could you could hit that up as well. But it looks like well, wait, we got another call. I spoke too soon. Caller, right, thanks for calling in. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, hi. This is Ryan. I'm calling from Riverside, California. Ryan, uh, I think it's your first call as well. Yes, this is my first time calling in. Great. Big fan Welcome of board. Welcome. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Listen, this is your show, and we're just here to talk sports, talk football, talk especially USC football with you. What's on your mind? Yeah, absolutely. No, just like what everybody's been talking about with the new uh, the new NIL, uh, the news coming out, um, being able to, you know, pay these uh, recruits that come out of high school now. Um, I think it's going to, you know, do wonders for, for SE recruiting now. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a huge leap going forward and it's just exciting times to come. Yeah. I, I really, I really can't stress enough that it just seems like there was little pieces missing from like, we saw flashes of what this could be in, in, um, in, in 20, uh, 22. And a lot of that had to do with the, on the back of Superman. Right. But, uh, we we know what we're going to get from our head coach. We know what the offense is going to be. Clearly, the issue was on defense that year. 
Then the offense, we 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 did other magic like the Bobby Haskins um, abracadabra, bringing up just bringing up Bobby Haskins from was Virginia, I think. And then all of a sudden, bam, we're ready to roll with our offensive line. Ran offensive line troubles. Then everyone's complaining about why can't we get these? Uh, why can't we get offensive you know, five star offensive tackles? Why can't we get uh, the big defensive linemen down south that we need to to plug our our defense? We're in big trouble. We're too small. Why can't Benny Wiley get these guys bigger, etc.? All of these little issues that are happening, again, one by one are getting sorted out. I caught myself saying that. Um, I, I, I really want to see these young offensive linemen step up. I know they can do it. When these guys come together as a unit, uh, a play together, it, it's going to be something special to see. Um, I just The question is going to be is how early can we be ready? Are we going to be ready when we go to Las Vegas for the kickoff against LSU? Are they be ready in Game Three in Ann Arbor against Michigan? Those are our big questions. Those that's going to tell us. I think that's going to give us a good feeling of what the overall season is going to be. But I have very little doubt that by the time we get to Game Six, Game Seven, Game Eight, and this team gets to gel a little bit with this coaching staff, with this defensive scheme, with the offensive line, kind of getting some battle tested together. I think that they're going to be ready to turn some heads. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and. uh I think a lot of people too. They they tend to forget that. Um, well, a lot of people think that you know USC is still soft in defense, and they, you know they they still think that we employ you know Alex Grinch, and you know uh, they're they're not familiar with these uh, new defensive uh, or these coaches uh, changes that Lincoln Riley made. Um, you know, uh, getting Danson Lynn and uh, you know Eric Henderson and Matt Matt Ant. You know, this this is just like a you know a great defensive staff that I, that I believe will be ready to, you know, to begin the season. And uh, that first game is probably going to be, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll show a lot. And uh, I think a lot of people will, will probably get a really good look at where USC is going to be that season or for this season coming up. And like you said, you know, going to, going into Michigan and, you know, uh, you know, just establish, establishing themselves that way, you know, we'll, we'll really get a feel on, you know, the trajectory that SC is, you know, Heading heading into and I you know and to me you know I'm not, I'm not just being a homer by it but you know I'm 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 loving what I'm seeing and I'm I'm just loving that I'm loving these uh these changes that Lincoln Riley the culture that's you know that's beginning that that we're beginning to see you know it's just uh, it's great to see and and it's very exciting. It is and um you know when you USC has got this name for being soft. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen even just when when Grinch got here, when when Coach Riley got here. It it it, it was before that as well, towards the end of the, of the of the Helton era. You know, part of that was definitely a depleted roster. You know, sometimes we don't the Jimmys and the Joes. Uh, and this is not to disparage any Trojan football player out there. Uh, I know there were studs on all of these teams, but just overall, the caliber of player was just not up to the standard here at USC. The coaching just was not. We talk about the great players, the Heisman's, the All-Americans. We've had some insanely talented coaches come through this place over the years, and there's a standard, and that standard was not being met. And what we are seeing now, <clears throat> and I like it, you know, it was Lincoln Riley's first press conference with, with Bone. They talked about a special alignment that, that Riley had here. And I think, yes, this is year three, but it is it's year three. Oh, my God, it's third year. But say, but it's only year three. You think back where this program was a month before we heard Lincoln Riley. We don't. We're, we're, no one wants. We're, oh God, no one wants the job. You know, this is this is terrible. We're gonna end up with a health, you know, a Helton level coach again, and then, wham, USC hits the world with the fact. Oh, by the way, we're gonna go take Oklahoma's coach, and then now we're saying, oh, by the way, we're gonna go take. Hey, this guy across town's really good. We're gonna take UCLA's coach. Oh, you know what? They're, this guy is amazing in the NFL. You know, we need someone to anchor this defense. You know, we're going to go grab uh, uh, Coach Henny from the Rams and make him our defensive line coach. You know, we need a linebacker coach. Hey, you know what? Let's get a multiple national champion head coach from North Dakota State and bring him as our linebacker coach. Doug Belk, you know, he's, he's the offensive coordinator at Houston. You know, let's bring him in and have him do our secondary for us. This is the moves. USC is finally playing big boy football. Everybody in the country, I don't care how much they want to pretend to whistle past the graveyard. When USC is hitting on all cylinders, you look the, you look out because USC is one of those few programs like in Alabama, you know, like uh, 
like a program like you know I can't even put I can't put Ohio State there because they're good but they're never like at that top for a long time. Do you know what I mean? You know, like Clemson was Clemson had a little bit of a run. USC is a school though that has traditionally historically done that. Notre Dame has a, used to do it, not there anymore. But I mean, USC is one of the few schools you put the right coaching staff together, they're gonna they can dominate college football for an extended period of time. Yeah, and absolutely. You know, and USC has all those resources. You know, the, you know the, the the location. You know, and the brand itself is just such a big, powerful. Everybody hears USC, they think of USC football, and you know that's the standard. It's, it's not just you know we're not like Oregon. Oh, we, you know we win the Pac-12. No, we we gun for national championships, and that's that's our standard. And I'm and I'm glad that you know I know that Lincoln Riley. You know he knows that that's the standard. And with the coaches that he's, that, like you said, that he got with these home run hires, you know, definitely on that right path and, and definitely on that right uh, uh, direction uh, towards that. So it, it's just very exciting. <laughs> no, it, 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 I, I, no doubt. And you know what I think about? We haven't, here's Matt, you know, we haven't had one duck. We had one Oklahoma fan, but we haven't had any like, you know, we haven't had any ducks call in to, to push back. On you know the way at the shots. I mean, I'm taking some fair shots at Oregon. Don't get me wrong. I think Oregon is most likely going to be the team to beat along with Ohio State if USC even has a, a thought of winning the Big Ten next year. Um, but you know, we don't get any calls from any of the other fan bases. I wonder why that is. I, I believe me, with 300 people watching right now between Twitter and and uh, and YouTube, I'm surprised. Just to let you guys know, you are welcome. You will be. I might take a couple. <laughs> at you but i'm I'm not i'm not gonna be disrespectful so curious to see if we next couple of weeks we can get some calls coming from other um other fan bases but i mean ryan again first call do we have we've had a couple of first time callers absolutely uh, amazing amazing call uh really appreciate you calling in any final thoughts or question you might have for us before we get out of here uh you know no you guys are just i'm just a you know big fan of you guys i'm you know um Love watching you guys show. I, you know, listen to you guys, uh, you know, all the time. I uh, just wanted to call since I had the time and just, you know, want to want to talk to Messi football. But uh, just exciting. Can't wait. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's 22 days for spring for spring ball. Um, and uh, now I'm just, you know, very excited and uh, looking forward to, looking forward to the season. Uh, I I am too, Ryan. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I got I got to calm down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, a re- yeah. uh, dude, uh, absolutely uh, appreciate the first time. You know, making that leap is not, it's not as difficult as it seems. You know, we we really again, yeah. I, I I absolutely value every call that comes in. I value every one of the 283 people that are still watching right now. Um, you guys, what make this show? This is all about you guys, and and it's just great and honor to hang out yeah. and talk to Trojan fans like you. So, fight on, man! And it's right. it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be a good season. You know, I can't promise you, Ryan, because I, I thought we'd have a good season last year. But I, I think everything's pointing in the right direction. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it, it, it's definitely there. And uh, before I go, I was gonna say because I know there's a lot of, you know, Oregon trolls on Twitter. But I work with a coworker. He's a big diehard Oregon fan, and even him, he's he's seeing the moves that USC's making, and he's like, oh man, USC is back in business. They're back and rolling. So I, I see the fear in his eyes. <laughs> he, you know, he knows he knows what's uh, he knows what's coming. So, so yeah, fight on, guys. Thank you for taking my call. Appreciate it. All right, fight on. Yeah, we're going to have to prove it on the field. We can take all the jokes we want and shots at Oregon. But, you know, they again, it's been the Utahs and the Oregons, you guys, and the Washingtons uh, of late that have run the, uh, ran our conference. It looks like USC, though, is returning to big boy football and, and, and ready to take on a, and pretty much anybody in, in the in the Big Ten. Um, all right, we got one more call, so we're going to grab this last call. Uh, last call. And then last call. We, we do got to head out. Um, uh, just waiting for it to queue up here. It might take a second. Um, Matt, while this call is queuing up, did you want to, uh, share anything again? It's been a busy day at Trojans wire. Uh, actually a busy couple of days at Trojans wire. Uh, you guys, if you have a minute, it's in the description, uh, of, of this, um, of this, uh, well, if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the description, uh, or you can go to, uh, if you, if you're on, uh, Twitter, go ahead and check out, um, Tim underscore Prangley. Uh, you, and you, you have links to uh, all of my articles there as well. So let's grab this last call, and I think we're going to get out of here. Thank you, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
What's up, Tim and Matt at Slap Happy from South Orange County? Speaking of $5 Super Chats, what's up, lady? Well, that's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I had a ton of thoughts and I uh, want to share a couple. Um, <clears throat> first off, um, you know, the, the hire that surprised me the most was Matt from uh, North Dakota State. That was the one that kind of caught me off guard more than anything. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I got distracted. Sorry. My son is leaving, walking out. Uh, believe it or not, I'm, I'm getting a uh, yeah. did. He, she, go ahead, Matt, and I'll follow up. He was just, he was saying that uh, Matt Ants caught, uh, caught him off guard more than anything, Tim. Who did? I'm sorry. The Matt Ants hire caught Slap Happy off guard more than anything. It was well. I mean, if you think about it, it was, it was out of left field. I don't think anybody really saw that coming. Especially, you know, people want to say, "Oh, well, it's, it's it's North Dakota State," but you're talking about a guy's won multiple cha uh, multiple championships, and that's, that's just the powerhouse uh, of FCS program. So, I mean, um, yeah, I, I'm more than happy. I, he's he's a very fiery guy. I I, I haven't really had a chance um, to talk to him yet, but I'm I'm really looking forward to having that opportunity. I wasn't there. I think it was Thursday. I can't remember, but I missed one of the practices. Uh, of course, it was when they talked to uh, Lynn, and, and I think they talked. I don't know if they talked to him or not, but I thought they did. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see that linebacker room. That room's going to be really important. And uh, the, the Easton Macarius Arnold, you know, you're bringing a guy who was an all conference kind of guy, Cobb, all conference guy. We have um, we ha we have a guy like. Eric Gentry, right? Who's who's just physically just a specimen himself, just a freak that's going to stand out there. That there's going to be a lot going on, and then and Rajon Davis. I mean, a, a guy that just whenever he's had a chance to go on the field has performed. Let's see what all these guys can do with a Matt uh, Entz, right, as the coach in a in a Lynn system. Because just I don't know what the linebackers were doing. It could not have been that many players. Some of them, a guy like Cobb, who's a all conference guy coming to the Big Twelve, and all of a sudden he doesn't doesn't look right out there. There's a reason for that. It's generally not the players. No, agreed. But I think that um, Matt will have a larger influence over the defense than just linebackers, big time. Oh, well, do you want to expand no, on that? Well, like model. Model. It's a collaborative well, no, model. I just think that's, that's and... the great things about this setup. What's that, Matt? I'm sorry, Matt. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. It's just if this is a collaborative model. That's the thing about this setup. It's going to be so great. It's not going to be Alex Grinch making all the decisions and making bad ones. It's going to be a lot of knowledgeable guys coming together and conferring and, and agreeing on what's best for the whole. That, that's what I'm really excited about. Are you saying that Rome was run better with senators and not an autocrat? Is that what you're telling us, Matt? Yeah, I, I, I think that you're going to you're going to have. Um, a bunch of guys. What? So if you were to take a shot at, at Danton Lynn, it's going to be, oh, well, the guy doesn't have a lot of experience. He just got surrounded by a well, bunch of experience. And that is the one piece well, that maybe, you know, either in, in possibly in, in, in halftime adjustments or just on the culture end of it or, or just getting just the, the vibe of college football, having these other pieces in place, I think, like you said, together um, with, with a collaborative piece, now I'm sure you have to have, and is, is, is everyone in that room? Everyone in that room knows that he's in charge, but there's I'm sure a lot of collaboration and a lot of wisdom in that room that's going to help Dan Lynn this early in his career. No, I totally agree. But like I said, I think he'll have a, you know a huge influence over all the defense. Um, he was watching. For, he was watching from the outside, looking at USC. I'm sure he was. And uh, you know, I've watched South Dakota State. I've watched that that whole all those divisions there, and um, he, he's going to be huge. In fact, I, I would believe in about three or four years, if all these folks leave, he could slide right into defensive coordinator easily, easily. Yeah, I I, I don't I don't disagree. I, I but we talked about it a little bit earlier, and I I could absolutely I could absolutely see that uh, as an option. For USC. All right, you got one more one more minute here. We're at 293. Thank you, by the way, everyone out there. If you are on YouTube, 
please do us a favor. If, if, and only if you've enjoyed the show, you feel like we've got a little entertainment. Uh, I know you guys have all added entertainment. I've been trying to read. I haven't been able to interact with the chat very much, but I see a lot of familiar faces. Thank you so much. You guys, Roger Dodgers always here. LFG is always here. Touchdown USC always, always here. Touchdown making a good point about that rocket ship. Here's one thing I didn't talk about tonight that I do want to talk about. I think, um, I think that USC J hit on, I was, and I was thinking the same thing last week when we started just lining up all of these, these recruits, defensive recruits from the South. We've been USC, not the other way around. Usually schools slow play players. These kids have been slow playing USC for years. Well, guess what? That's, those days are over. These slots are going to fill up. USC has interest from around the country. And if you're a local recruit who's a top name and you've been courting and playing all the game, talking to Texas, talking to Alabama, talking to Georgia, I mean, go for it. you got to be you. If that's your future, if that's where you see yourself being – that's cool. But if you want to be at USC, you might want to start thinking, okay, hold on a minute. You know, these, these slots are filling up fast. Do I want to be a Trojan? And if you do, I highly suggest you get on that rocket ship before it passes you by. All right. Well, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, slap, appreciate well, you. Well, no, Jim, I was going to say. Yeah. I'm sorry. If we got to go, we got to go. No, no, it's just, it's just whatever you want to do. One thing, I, one thing that drives me crazy is dead air. And if, if I've, I don't want to be the one talking for an hour and a half. Believe me, that's just exhausting. But if you have something else, go no, for it. No, no, that's cool. No, what I was going to say was we go back to Robinson and McKay. Um, you know, their strong points were obviously the offense is always great. But, you know, they started with defense. And I think they've built the – and, again, four years of Grinch was kind of icky. God bless him. Good luck, Wisconsin, unless they have the players. Um but I think they've built this uh, defensive uh, the defensive coaches really well. And, uh, you know, last year I was expecting so much more than actually what came to fruition. But um, I don't know. Um, hopefully this year we uh, win eight or nine games. And I, I guess in about three years we should be wrecking Oregon. Michigan might build back in Ohio State. But we'll see. So I hope so, man. Because slap, I last can't, year was slap. I can't wait three years. But, we aren't waiting three years. I'm not thinking we're turning around in 2000. Now we're not just going to jump onto the scene and own college football. But I, I just, I, I think that we've been developing our lines for this is the second year, and, and I'm talking maybe third year. That's going to be enough depth right there for that depth piece. I think with NIL ramping up like it's doing, I think that we're going to be in a different position. You can get those linemen that can be difference makers as freshmen and sophomore, but you don't need a developmental guy that you need to wait two, three years to get on your line. I, I think that – I, You know what, Tim? Yeah. Tim, I agree, but we had a great weekend last weekend. But there's questions on the O-line now that's coming out. I don't want to have the expect, expectations so high but I'm so disappointed again next year. You know, I expect eight or nine wins, and maybe the next year we blow it out. Well, okay. But the last few years have been disappointing from my perspective. Well, isn't it the job of a fan to have their expectations blown out of the water every year? Because every fan should be wanting yes, a national it championship. Is, but... And only one of the 133 teams can actually win the national championship. So it's part and parcel. If you want to be a fan, you're going to get your guts ripped out more often than not. So, hey, listen, my, uh, my phone's breaking up. So I appreciate you guys. And uh, have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you slap calling in. Again, I appreciate everyone that's here right now. we got 300 people, wow, on right now. Thank you uh, for being here. It just blows my mind that 300 people want to sit here, talk college football, well, USC football, before April. Uh, it's just an honor to be with all you guys here. One more time, I'm just going to throw it. If you're not subscribed, uh, it's just an arbitrary number, but it does for some reason help the channel out. Uh, hit that subscription, but also make sure if you do hit the subscription, make sure you hit that the the notification bell as well. Um, that you can subscribe super easy. It's free. It's right here. If I could actually find the little thing, uh, it's right here in the corner. Hey Tim, you just click. You, can we hold a second. Tim. You just click the corner right here, and you you hit subscribe. It's about as easy as you could do. Uh, again, if you don't like the show, don't you know? Thank you for being here. Appreciate you check us out. But if you enjoyed the show, hit that like subscribe button. Really appreciate everybody being here. Slap really quick. Did you have something you want to add? Yeah, our quarterback this year is going to do really well. 
he will stay. He will stay in the offense, and he's going to su- surprise people. Watch. I agree. I think that's got Miller and Moss, superb leader, quick reads, cerebral yep. guy, brilliant, yep. and knows when to yep. get rid of the ball when there's nothing there. I think that he's going to run Riley's system with these insane, re- insane receivers that you guys are going to enjoy watching this year. Again, slap happy. Appreciate you fight Bingo. on. We'll see you next time. Better guys. All right. Um, so again, thank you all for being here. Really awesome. Make sure you check us out on Monday uh, for the uh, uh, the I can't get all shows together for the uh, Trojan Conquest live Monday with Mark Rogers, Voice of College Football. You can see us here at seven o'clock Pacific, ten o'clock Eastern. Uh, and uh, make sure you're checking me out. I have. I mean, I, w- I was going to show you guys just how literally how many stories I've thrown up. And if any of these things, you guys, if any of these stories are of any interest to you whatsoever, head over to the description. Uh, the, sorry, the link is in the description um, section of the of the YouTube. If you're on YouTube um, channel, it's right here. Here's just some of the things I've been working on. Um, you know, it's it's just a, a number of things. You know, we're, we're t- just talking about the offense, but what about the defense? The Big Ten. You know, had a chance to, again that interview with uh, Coach Henderson, you know, uh, and just really breaking down that great weekend we had. Uh, Rakes opened up about why he came to USC and what he, what he needs to work on. Uh, you have Matai, who now he showed up at practice, as everyone knows that now, and uh, he's probably might be the next guy to drop. Just so much. Kyle Ford was at practice, you guys. So if you want to hear anything daily, I mean, these are all like in the past two days, all these stories. But if daily, if you want to hear stories about what's going on at USC, mainly college football, Ah, uh, this is your opportunity. Go over to Trojans Wire. Check us out. These are just my articles. Matt's thrown out twice as many as I am. So uh, appreciate everyone being here. As always, uh, it's going to be a great off season, but I have a feeling it's going to be even better uh, season. Make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. Uh, appreciate all of you guys being here. Oh, I almost messed up. And for God's sake, you guys over at the at the uh, NCAA, stop looking like fools. Please do us a favor. And give this man his trophy back. He won it on the field. Uh, you guys are feckless. You guys don't do anything. Literally, USC is saying, we're going to change our policy because, well, quite frankly, you can't keep your, your rules straight. Please give Reggie Bush his trophy back. Get on the right side of history. Uh, and, and maybe, maybe, grab some low-hanging fruit and look like, although you weren't the one who, who took away his trophy, you can be the one that gave it back to him. So, um, the rest of you guys, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Um, I am Matt ex- excited about what's going on. We're going to have a draft coming up right next month. Uh, a number of different events will be coming up uh, on, on Trojans wire. Make sure you check it us out there. So uh, for Matt, this is Tim. Uh, make sure you are donating to uh, house of victory as always. And we will see all of you guys on Monday fight on. <laughs>